a little village called O'Connell, situated between Bathurst and Oberon. Just 355 people live in this quaint little community. And of course, as with many country towns, this is the hub, the O'Connell Hotel. How good is this? The O'Connell Hotel has refreshed travellers and locals since 1865. And I can only imagine what it would have been like back in the early days. And here to show me around is former police officer and now pub owner, Lionel. Obviously the most important uh, room in the hotel is the front bar. Yeah, this is the central part of the hotel. This is one of the reasons why people come here because of the history. It's like most country hotels, they gather nicks and knacks and they get history about them. Like, the brands up on top of the woodwork here. Most of the properties here, when they were working cattle and sheep stations before a lot of them got broken down, these are the family brands for the people that were on there. These are very important to a lot of people that are out here. We still have families from these properties that come here and they can point them out and they, they tell you which ones are their parents and which properties they, they're from. It's just a lovely little bit of history like, like the pub itself. Yeah, but also like even the notes, like I think that started off, that was well before my time, but we, we still get people that come in and they go, oh, I've been overseas, I've been on holidays, and they still bring note, different notes in to add to it. One of those things about a country hotel that's idiosyncratic with it and that people come and they look at it. This is the original wall that was made when the hotel first went up. And I think it's called Pist Construction, P-I-S-T-E. That's fitting. Uh, yeah, mud, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Mud and straw. The walls are about a, thick, a foot thick and it was made back in 1865 and that's how long it stood up and this has been framed so that people can have a look. This is, hasn't been added to or anything. This is the original wall that went up when the hotel was made. Unbelievable. So it doesn't look like much at the moment, but this is where it all happened. Yeah, it is. At the moment, we've had to store a lot of stuff in here because of COVID, but this tiny little room here was the original bar of the hotel. The bar used to run across this way to the window and that was the front door of the hotel. And it was officially the smallest bar in Australia for quite some time. So here we are behind what is now the front bar and, and I can see you've got these beautiful walls of obviously what was the old exterior to the pub. It's just, you know, it feels old. It is. This is, the, this is another extension from the hotel. You see, this is the original roof, the old shingle roof. This is the kitchen in here. It's a beautiful big standstone bricks and everything. But you can see the contrast between the original walls. These are earth and straw. You can see it framed in the glass there. Beautiful insulation and everything. But then we move out into the bricked area here. And then as you move further out, it's another decade improvements and renovations. You don't see a hallway like this in every single pub. It's obviously pretty iconic. The photos here, they're, they're very historical. They go back a very long way. They've been collected over the time by the different publicans that have been here and been added to. We've done a fair bit of research ourselves. We're adding to them as well. And it's just getting better and better at each time. How does it feel to know that you are part of something much bigger than just a pub, you know? It's a focal point of, of this whole little village. You do feel pretty special because even like the photos, if you have a look, it's an integral part of the community here. And like in, in days gone by, this was quite a large community. There was a service station here. There's been a bakery next door. There's been countless other businesses here that have gone over the time, but it is still an integral part of the community that brings the locals together. The architecture hasn't changed at all. It's been added to over the years in bits and pieces. But the basic architecture from out the front, it's very recognisable. Everyone sees it gives us the O'Connell Hotel. It's a family affair here at O'Connell. Lionel, former copper from Bathurst, purchased the pub back in 2017. And daughter Laura is the licensee. So has it made the father-daughter relationship a lot stronger, having a pub together? Yeah, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> No, it Be is. honest, you know, I, it's I am. Mate, it's I am. No, it is. Um, it does have its ups and downs. Yeah. It uh, does bring you closer together, but there are some situations where it can be a bit tense and a bit difficult. But no, it's not too bad. We one of the reasons that we put Laura into the place was to keep the grandkids here. Is there a better business to have than a pub? You get your highs and your lows. You, things like New Year's Eve when we put on a rodeo on New Year's Eve. You have Australia Day where we have our annual recycle cooking competition. 
um, they're definitely the highs. And then you have COVID where we were closed. We opened the side window here and it was a takeaway outlet and we started doing takeaway meals. Financially pretty bloody tough. Absolutely. If my wife doesn't work on site, she has another job, with her income not coming in, we wouldn't be here now. The last thing we want to do would be to have to close. It's not just a venue, it is an integral part of the community. On the weekends you'll see people come down, they, a lot of the times they don't even come in, they'll come down and they'll sit in the beer garden just to meet, just to mingle and get together because there's no community resources or anything out here but for, for that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a central meeting place and very, very important to the community. A lot of the land now is being subdivided, so we're getting a lot more housing and you do get a lot more families. And as a result, that the venue has to, had to become a lot more family orientated. And it, it's, it has been good that way, but it's, it, it fluctuates. Like on a typical day, there's probably no one here between two and four. And then from four o'clock, we get the factory workers from Oberon. We get the station hands that are working on the properties called through. And they'll come in and they'll only have one or two beers and they'll go, and that's the only time you see them. Yeah. But that's the important nature of the hotel, where it fits that niche in the community. You know, if it wasn't here, these people wouldn't call in, they wouldn't mix with other people, they'd just go straight home. We'll have to go and ask the publican and the, uh, the owners what, what the story is with this because there's going to be a story somehow and you can just imagine that someone quite a few years ago by the look of this beautiful old uh, ute has uh, possibly had one too many and driven it into the creek here. But what a beautiful thing. I mean, maybe not for everyone, but wow. All right, time to head back inside and meet the locals. Find out what makes this place tick. And who better to start with than farmer John Bestwick, an O'Connell local for nearly 80 years. Tell us a little bit about your life story and a little bit about O'Connell. When I was 10 year old, father bought the property that we're living in now and they moved down there in 1942. Things have changed over the years and where once people used to move around very locally and play tennis and cricket and so forth, that was about going out by the time I left school and people tended to head more to Bathurst. The way the whole district has changed is something that, uh, I mean, virtually everybody around were people who made their money off the land and all the others now are owned by people who have made their money elsewhere and, and a lot of it's been cut up and been opportunities because of the older farmers going out and they've built up places. Land values have just skyrocketed in, the, in recent times. Now, can I ask you, what are your earliest memories of the O'Connell Hotel? The, uh, the little bar at the far end was, it was the, the bar, and uh, it was the smallest bar in Australia. If you got about six or eight people in there, it was crowded. <laughs> so you've got memories of, uh, of being in there, having a few drinks? You'd be in there with, with Dad and having a raspberry drink or something. Late afternoon once there probably would have been shearers and fences and, and uh, farmers and whatever, having a drink here. And uh, now I don't think there's all that many get here through the weekdays. Uh, and uh, they rely fairly heavily on weekends. 1969, and we came over here and uh, it was a cool night and the, uh, the fire wasn't going and uh, the uh, publican's wife told her husband to light the fire and he's having a tr trying to light it and didn't have good kindling there and so forth and he went and got uh, some, a bottle of kerosene and they're having a bit of a barney and and his wife's going crook on him and he's going crook back at her and he's got the kerosene bottle and the, 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 the flames caught and he didn't know since coming up and over the, over the mantelpiece and caught the calendar of light above the mantelpiece and the flames were licking the ceiling so I was pretty lucky that the pub's still here. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people would probably know that story. That no, no there would have been only half a dozen of us in the bar at that stage. Now, one thing that I did find particularly interesting was all of the cattle markings 
on the bar. Oh, that's right, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that and is yours up there? Uh, yes, it is up there. At the time, there was a, a kitty in Bathurst who had a rare disease and couldn't get any treatment in, in Bathurst, couldn't get any treatment in Australia. And uh, people were raising money to uh, send him, the child over to London. And uh, so part of the fundraising was you, you paid to have your, your, your brand up there on that beam and that money all went towards that, that child going to London for treatment. Yeah, fantastic. And it's become such a nice thing to look at. Oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. Absolutely right. Standing by the fire at the O'Connell pub, how good is it that it's back and open? Oh, it doesn't, doesn't get much better. Um, I haven't been down here for probably two, two months, so yeah, no, it's nice to be back. How's it been the last couple of months? It's been very tough on a lot of people. In the last two years have been very, very tough mm. um, for a lot of locals and, you know, we've been involved in hay runs and, and, and you know, it probably started if you want to pop back three years ago, where there was, there was some big fires at Dunny Do, um, yeah. and we done a big hay drive through here, and semi load after semi load landed on Dunny Do, and then all of a sudden, pretty well, we hadn't had a season since then. And these graziers that donated semi load of hay, um, you know, they sort of left themselves dry. Yeah. And, and then we've gone into this drought of a couple of years and topped off by the fires. I think it was the ultimate, you know, unfortunately, the, the wor one of the worst top offs that everybody could have had. Yeah. Obviously a place like this is so important as a meeting place for members of the community. Yep. No, for sure. And we come down, we used to come down to the pub every Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, you know, sit out in the front, talk to everyone until ten o'clock at night. And, you know, that interaction, you know, with your neighbours and local braziers and clients and all that sort of stuff. It, a lot of the business is done here, you know, and this is where the networks start. So yeah, no, it's 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 great to be back. It's it's been pretty surreal for a lot of people and you know, been cooped up and saying that we probably live in the best part of the world under the circumstances, but yeah. yeah. And how's it, how's it affected you the last couple of months? Look, we've, we've adapted and we've sort of kept going with our business. We're probably one of the very fortunate ones in, in our business and, and what we do and you know, we do a lot of rural property and livestock yeah. and all that sort of business. Um, open homes and all that stopped, but, and um, naturally the, the conversations that you have down at the pub on a Friday night, talking to people, that stopped, but um, we've been pretty fortunate. I, I think it just shows how good of a place we live. Um, so many people wanting to come this way has probably kept us quite busy, in fact. But it's not all business. As the afternoon rolls into the evening, families gather in the dining room and the kitchen roars to life. I oh, know you're busy, can we come in for one second? Not only is the publican pouring beers and looking after the financials and pleasing Dad, but she's also been called into the kitchen because that's what you do in a country pub. Laura, what are you doing? Did some tonight. Um, in a little bit that we've been open already, the first hour we've done about 51 meals. Wow. Um, so we're cooking, all hands on deck, lots of sizzles tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so this is obviously, you're not normally in the kitchen, you've normally got a, a, a cook, a chef. So we've got two others, my sister's in here, um, and I do have a cook during the week and on weekends, but I'm in here just as much. So as long as I'm in the bar, I'm in here as well, so, yeah. And, and what do you prefer, in, in here sweating it out or uh, out there pouring beers? I love pouring beers. <laughs> it's a face-to-face -face interaction that I love, but someone's got to do this job as well. Someone's got to do it. That's exactly right. What brings you to the O'Connell Hotel on a beautiful winter's eve? Lucky locals and a birthday, so... Birthday gal? Yeah. It's all Tuesday as well. It's all yeah. Tuesday, yeah. We've, we've just found out. <laughs> now, how nice is it that the pub's open and you can get to do I this? Know. It is very good, out and about, socialising with everybody, yeah. Having a... Cold coffee. doesn't taste the same in a bottle. No, it doesn't, no. it doesn't. <laughs> so, what does this place mean to uh, locals? You know, it must be nice to have a pub and somewhere that you can come and gather and bring friends and family. Definitely, like we, we're lucky being from Oberon and now living in Bathurst. This is a thoroughfare and you always get to see just how many people are sort of around town and being in like O'Connell itself, being the halfway sort of hotel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's just really nice seeing that everything's back up and running. 
it was sorely missed and yeah just just a wind down after work it's always a good a thing. nice halfway point between oberon and bathurst to meet the parentals and us nice halfway always been a stopover for a traveler yeah <laughs> but since the kids have bought and moved into bathurst we've made this our point that we meet yeah cold drink good feed there's not much else you can ask for really good mates you know there's not much better than letting something off your chest to good people and you know having a bartender that listens this looks unreal oh the big question is where did i put my beer pubs like the o'connell really come to life in the summer with its enormous beer garden paddock and river access but it's nights like these in the middle of winter where you really see just how important this place is to the locals. Illustrated in the framework of the little front bar, there are generational stories burnt into the woodwork of this beautiful old building. So that's the O'Connell Hotel, one of the great pubs in the central west of New South Wales and as you can see it not only brings together a family, but it brings together a whole community. And we've only really just scratched on the surface of what places like this mean to country Australia. On to the next one. Well, that was fun, but someone else can drive home. <laughs>